Continuing on with our series of complications uh, that can occur after joint replacement, the biggest one, or certainly the biggest one from my perspective as well as a patient's perspective, is infections. Infections can absolutely ruin a good outcome from joint replacement. This is unfortunately because even though we can successfully treat a lot of them, it will often lead to increased scarring, further surgeries, a prolonged rehabilitation period, and often a secondary, a secondary outcome that's not as good as the first time around. So what does it look like if you get an infection after your joint replacement? Often you'll find that uh, the wound itself can become red and angry looking. This is what people usually expect when they see an infection. Uh, often when you cut your finger or something like that and it gets red around it, you've got a superficial infection there that your body naturally cleared uh, from the skin commensals, which are bacteria that normally live on our skin. Uh, the other way that infection can present are later down the line when people get infections spread from elsewhere in their body. So they get what's called metastatic um, infection, so spread of infection from another source. So every time we brush our teeth and our teeth bleed or we wipe ourselves and there's blood on the paper, bacteria has actually entered our bloodstream and normally our immune system will just mop them up. Unfortunately, however, if you have a uh, artificial joint within your body, then you've got an area that if the bacteria can get onto it, they can then form a protective coat over themselves and survive there, uh, actually like a deep bunker away from the immune system that's trying to destroy them. And that will often then lead to loosening of the joint, pain, swelling around it, and basically a joint that's not functioning well. They're very difficult to diagnose infections uh, because sometimes people can get pain around a joint replacement and there's no underlying infection at all, but when they've got an infection there, they have to get, you have to get an organism to be able to treat it successfully, and this can be quite technically difficult sometimes. Uh, there's many papers that have been written about trying to identify when a joint is infected rather than it's just painful. So the risks um, for joint replacement, uh, for, so the risk rather for infection, um, are uh, anybody that has a high BMI, which is a body mass index. This is why we often don't offer surgery to people that have a BMI over 40, because we know the risks of infection uh, are much greater. Um, it's obviously something you can control yourself, and people will often say to me when they come and see me that I can't do anything because I can't exercise. Unfortunately, ex exercise adds very little to overall weight loss, and it's mainly diet that's, that uh, is the biggest contributory factor. If you've been eating uh, excessive amounts of calories over a prolonged period, then when you reduce those calories down, people often assume it looks like they're eating next to nothing because they've, they have re organized in their brain what normal is and they're normally skewed. The other risk factor is unfortunately being male sex. This is probably down to a, a few different factors, um, namely poor self hygiene um, and smoking and alcohol, which contribute more to men being at a greater risk of infection after joint replacement. The other one is peripheral vascular disease where the vessels in the leg are furred up. This stops the wound from healing as well and then uh, if the wound takes longer to heal, then the skin, which is the protective barrier, doesn't seal over fast enough and, it, and bacteria can get into the joint itself. Um, several other um, chronic conditions can increase the risk, such as depression, uh, congestive cardiac failure, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, which is an immune-based disease, also affects uh, the risk of uh, infection and it's slightly higher in those patients. Often some of the drugs they take as well will need to be stopped before the surgery because they delay wound healing. Um, if you use steroids, for other, uh, not necessarily for physiological muscle gain, but for other reasons um, to be um, prescribed by your doctor, this can also uh, have an immunocompromising uh, effect and increase the risk of infection getting in. This is despite everything that we do in theatres. Uh, I wear protective clothing, I've got a visor on, we're in an, uh, in an enclosed environment that has airflow in, uh, we've used uh, cleaning solutions to reduce the bacterial load on the skin, we use films over the uh, joint that we're replacing to protect the surroundings, uh, to protect the wound and deeper in from uh, bacterial ingress, but unfortunately skin is a very good barrier to protecting ourselves and we're breaching it intentionally, which then puts the joint at risk. 
So hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea there about uh, infection um, and it can unfortunately have significant dramatic effects on your uh, outcome and the success of your joint replacement. Luckily though, the risk is exceedingly low. In the literature, it's quoted at about 1%, but in reality, it's probably even lower than this for places that do large volumes of joint replacements regularly. So I hope that's been inf informative for you.